my brothers and sisters in Christ, I often think that many of us look upon the Old Testament readings as something out of ancient history and not relevant to our current society. We think of the prophet Jeremiah as someone speaking only to the Jews. Actually, the Old Testament writers were talking directly to us because the Catholic faith is the true faith which Moses, Isaiah, and Jeremiah all foretold. These and the other writers predicted the Messiah who would come, and when he came, the prophecies would be fulfilled. It is in this context that we just heard, woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. In this reading, Jeremiah condemns the leaders of the Israelites who have not cared for God's sheep. He holds them accountable for their negligence. God is a loving God. He is forgiving and understanding, but he is also consistent. He punishes those who lead his people away from his care and protection. Is this message of the word of God also for us and our society today, when we witness how the leaders of our nation mislead and scatter the people of God? Our faith is not something that is found only in books, but in our everyday lives. We must react to the situations we find in our everyday lives. I know many will say, you must not mix religion with politics. However, it seems that is just what Jeremiah is saying when he accuses the leaders for having led the Israelites away from their God. That is happening to us now. Does that mean Jeremiah is speaking direct directly to us? Yes, it does. Our political leaders, the members of our courts, some of our spiritual and public leaders, and great, great numbers of the ordinary people have been the shepherds who have mislead and scattered the flock of Jesus Christ. We are not talking about politics when we honestly admit our nation is in trouble with God. Our public schools discontinue the presence of God in their buildings. It is not allowed to talk about God in schools, but atheist teachers are allowed to deny the existence of God and the great Christian faith until it becomes an absurd and primitive idea. Our Kurds, our president, and those who help him govern have proclaimed the killing of the unborn to be perfectly legal. Our children and young people have been deceived with the gender ideology, according to which they are not born male or female, but can, can choose their gender according to their feelings and emotions. And money from the public purse is destined to sex change surgeries. The new generations have lost the right given to them by divine and natural law to be born in a home made up of a father and a mother. And those who oppose this divine and natural order publicly express their pride, claiming the right to be recognized as a family and as a marriage. Our entertainment leaders ridicule objections to their production of movies, music, TV shows, and video games that legitimize sins against the fifth, sixth, and ninth commandments. It seems that most of the people of our country have adopted the slogan, if it feels good, do it. But those are not the words of God. Some in our society believe that our leaders can determine what is right 
and what is wrong. And they have the authority to change God's commandments. But we know that's not the case. It is God's law that, that still prevails. And they, as well as each one of us, will be judged by whether or not we obey God's laws. And so, it comes down to certain fundamentals. Do we believe in God? Do we believe that His words should direct our thinking and our actions? It is a decision each of us must make. Obviously, many people in our society do not agree that God should be in control. So what do we do when some in our society take it upon themselves to lead us in the wrong direction? Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pastures, says the Lord. You have scattered and I will take care to punish your evil deeds. We are the shepherds because we choose and elect those who are in power and represent us. So what are we to do? First, we must pray. That often seems to be a process that doesn't have any effect of the society around, around us. However, it is what God tells us to do. He will guide us. He has promised to give us strength and to be with us. Secondly, we must be involved. Others are working very hard to lead our society into chaos. We must be willing to elect men and women, our shepherds, who will not mislead and scatter the flock. Some might say, we cannot succeed. It is too late. We are too far gone. That's not the truth. God has given us the answer. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. <laughs>